No, 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 no. Let's show them. Let's show them. You guys are cooking that delicious steak on this thing. All right, so right now we're headed out to Flushing, Queens. Queens is a borough of New York, and it's super diverse, but right now we are headed to Flushing, which is specifically the Asian zone. All right, so in episode two of Make It Happen, we are heading out to Queens, New York to meet up with some Flushing natives that are making their imprint on the sneaker economy and this hyper supercharged food scene. So Perry and his friends run one of the most well-known sneaker consignment shops in the city, and Carson and his partner are introducing healthy Asian flavors to this new modern quick service restaurant style. Let's go see how they make it happen out of Flushing, Queens. Thank you so much for clicking on that video about food and sneakers out in Queens. You're really gonna like it. But first, I gotta give a big shout out to the sponsor of this series, Wix. They are helping you make dope, clean websites super easily. All right, so I sat down with David and we talked about what kind of website we should make. And we decided that we're gonna make a networking website, one where other people can contribute to. A lot of people hit us up when they come to New York and LA and ask, hey, I'm coming to New York. Is there like a video guy, photographer, talent, anybody I can meet? Hey, I'm coming to LA to make emotional silent films. Do you know anybody that can help me out? Personally, I may not know that person, but hopefully you'll be able to find them on that site or at least find someone to start with. So with that in mind, let's look for a website design. So first of all, it is free to sign up and then you click on what type of category your website falls underneath. You can either answer a few questions about what you need or browse through a bunch of templates yourself. I love this feature. I'm gonna let Wix ADI help build my website for me. It's gonna ask you the name for the website, which I will reveal later. You can even buy a custom URL domain through Wix and you don't even have to go through an outside system. If you wanna choose a template for yourself, you can easily browse through them all. So let's just take a look at what I get when I type up forum. Because you know, it might be like a forum or a networking business site. Wix has all of that by the way. And even when you do find a template, you still get to edit and modify it. You get to customize an already unique template. All right, everybody, we are making a lot of progress on this website, but I will tell you the actual name of our website on the next drop. But until then, please enjoy Make It Happen, episode two. Starting off, we're gonna go to Image NY. Let's talk about the pros and cons of owning a brick and mortar sneaker shop and about possibly disappointing their parents. All right, everybody, I am here with Perry and Greg of Image NY. Yo, thank you guys for being here. This is Image NY. Welcome to Flushing. So in the past, we have filmed a lot of videos here, but today we're not talking about the latest drop or the hype issue. I wanna talk about like your guys' story, the struggles, and the successes of owning your own consignment shop. So you guys provide a physical storefront in a trusted place where people can buy the shoes from Nike or their Foot Locker and then they resell it through you guys. You guys take a cut. Yes. How has selling sneakers changed in about the past 10 years from when you guys really started? Oh Well, back in the day, a lot of people did a lot of meetups, sneaker exchanges and everything, but people get caught with fakes and like, or they get scammed online. We skipped that whole process. You bring it here, you could legit check the shoes. The buyers are confident they get an authentic shoe when they come here and shop. So how did you guys come up with the idea and muster up the courage to start a shop together? And your first shop was started out of a mall. Yes, yes. This was uh, 2011. We were 21. Our passion was sneakers. And then we had an opportunity to open in a brand new mall. So we're like, let's take a risk. We're young. Let's you know, let's go for it. So in 2011, you guys decide to open up a shop in the mall. Uh, what's your inventory like? Whose other shoes are you selling? Is it just your collection? A piece of your collection? What is that like? Well, majority of it was uh, our collection. And then we had some friends, they wanted to get out of the game and they had like hundreds of sneakers. So, you know, they trusted us because they were our friends. That was the hardest part. Like um, we had no connections with Nike. There was no Adidas contract, none of that. Because we wanted to build something where we just sell the hottest shoes. You know, we don't want to just sell regular stuff that you can find at Full Locker and Finish Line, you know? We were like a one-stop shop in Flushing.
there's a lot of kids out there who would imagine that owning their own sneaker shop is really just fun. You know, they come in, everybody's just chilling. But really, what is the work that happens behind the scenes that a lot of people are not thinking about? With a sneaker store, you gotta make sure your inventory's right. We're dealing with customer sneakers, you know, so we gotta take care of it like it's our own. Right, you're selling other people's property. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and if it somehow gets lost or yeah, stolen, that's yeah. on. That, that's yeah. on us. And then you gotta deal with fraud, fakes, chargebacks. So, so you when you come in the image and you see them kicking it, they're actually worrying about all this stuff. <laughs> I mean, even security. I mean, I'm sure you guys have a bunch of merchandise sitting in the store. That's yeah. something you guys Yeah, we, we probably have over a million dollars in here, but it's... It's, we're friends with the local police, so make sure you know anything happens. You know they're they're on call right away. Finding roles in a team, any good team. I mean, even if we're talking about the NBA, I mean, people can't all do the same thing. So I guess how did you guys determine that? Anything you do, you need a good team. Like you gotta trust each other. Like this guy's gotta handle this. Greg's good with like all the online stuff because you know he used to run a lot like the online forums. Like I was more of the back end. I handled like the getting the lawyers, getting the accountants. I was good at that. We each had our dedicated roles. You find what you're strong at and you focus on that. We got along, we trusted each other 100 percent Good or bad, you know, we still had each other's back, you know. Once you lose that trust with partners, is that pretty much it? That can be it. I, yeah, you know, you all gotta put in the work, you know. Blood, sweat, and tears, that's how you make it happen. What are the biggest pros and cons, in your guys' opinion, of going the entrepreneurial route instead of going the more clear path? The most obvious pro is, you, you know, we didn't want to work for anyone else. We wanted to work for ourselves. You know, I feel like that's the biggest pro. Freedom, you know. You know, it's not all rainbows and butterflies, like, straight off the bat. We were grinding for, like, the first three years, we were like... All our friends went on vacation, we're like, yeah, yeah we, we can't went, go. We had no days off. Yeah, we we, yeah, that's a big thing. If you're yeah. starting a business, you cannot take a bunch of vacation we, days. We that's had, not how it We works. had all our money put into it. We were like broke. You know, you're not making money at first, you know, but you know, if you love what you do and you just keep grinding, we were a little discouraged after like, you know, the second, third year, but then we're like, yo, it's gonna happen. I think a lot of people, they get discouraged and they quit. What made you guys grind through that and really believe in your guys yourself? Well, we saw the sneaker culture just growing and we're like, there's so much money to be made. We're like, all this money is not going to waste. There was a point where we had, we didn't even promote consignment. It was just word of mouth. And this was right before Instagram came out. People just started bringing us their shoes and we were like, wow. No, I mean, you guys saw the market growing for what yeah. you guys were doing. Yeah. So it was almost like you guys were on the right path. Yeah. Yeah. It was just probably a matter of fact of how are you gonna capture? Yeah. How are you gonna get involved? All right, so last question for you guys. What do you tell a young person who's coming up to you and saying, oh man, like I wanna start a business, I wanna start a sneaker store, but like I don't have the capital, I don't know anybody I can trust, I'm a young kid, I don't have any of that, where do I start? All right, stop making excuses, that's one. First, you gotta grind, you gotta make sacrifices. Network, networking is a big thing, you know. Whatever it is, go out to events, you know, find people with the same interests. If you guys have the same vision, you know, you guys work toward it. Everyone starts somewhere. I start, we start out of our basement. So you gotta grow. Yo, shout out to Perry, Greg, and everybody else from Image NY. Yo, thank you so much for Thanks doing for that. By. Hopefully that was very helpful to you guys. If you guys have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. We're always here to help. Wait, you're gonna answer all the DMs? Yeah, just, you know, <laughs> DM me, Perry Stacks, you know, you need any help. Just keep grinding, do what you love, do your research. I know not all shop owners want to give out so much free advice. Cool, that wraps it up at Image NY, and we are continuing our flushing episode of Make It Happen. I'm about to go around the corner to a fast, casual Asian restaurant. Let's check it out. We just came from Image NY with Perry and Greg. Now we're outside of Queens Crossing to visit our friend Carson. His spot, OK La, just opened up and it's one of the hottest spots around here. Let's check it out. All right, everybody, I am here with Carson and Neil. Thank you guys for being here. Yeah, thank you. We just want to welcome you guys to Queens Crossing, Flushing, New York. Welcome to Okela. It smells delicious out here. You guys, I would say, are the hottest Asian, new American, fast casual spot in all of New York. 
Thank you. Yeah, 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 that's fair, that's fair. Are you guys chefs or not officially chefs or you love food or what to do? I'm actually a chef trained and, and schooled in New York City. I opened up my own restaurant, Lumpia Shack, and also worked in like several fine dining restaurants throughout New York. Me, never classically trained, but school of hard knocks, just working on taco trucks, food stands. Oh, okay. Cool, and now you guys are serving all these different Asian flavors all from this. I mean, we, we try to call it like American, new American. This is like, you know, Asian American growing up. And the foods that are from our backgrounds, we try and take and put it into the food here for flushing. Keeping it healthy, keeping it light, and keeping it fresh. We got two plates here, guys. We got a Viennese marinated hanger steak on top of our house herb salad. We got kale, arugula, mint, Thai basil, radishes, carrots. We gotta make a house-made chili lime vinaigrette for this salad. And over here is our chicken adobo uh, with some uh, Singapore noodles and the number one bestseller. It's our silken tofu salad. Really, the tofu yeah. is the yeah, number one. Yeah, you should try it. Dig in. Oh, that's smooth. Mm -hmm. I've had this dish before, a form of it. Flavor is quite different. Very sweet, mm -hmm. has a little crispies in it. That's a really nice switch up. Mm -hmm. This is marinated in fish sauce and you take a bite of it. Mm. You like that house made sriracha? Trevor, I like how that sriracha works with it even better than the original sriracha. I I'm not afraid to say that. All right, that wraps up the food portion. We're about to move into the kitchen and talk about some business. Woo. This is the kitchen of Okela. So I do want to talk about you know, opening your own business, the glory behind it, the inglorious moments. What is one thing you learned since opening up a physical spot? Some of the biggest things I learned is to be patient. Things take time, you know, especially with this place. We signed a lease December 13th. We didn't open to one year later, December 8th. Opening up anything, it has problems. For example, our contractor left us halfway through the building. Your contractor isn't the person who builds out yeah. the stuff. Yeah. So this is the person who built out the front, right? Yeah. He built a half, half of it, half of it. And he leaves. And he leaves. We're, 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 we're scrambling. We're trying to figure out, you know, me and Neil, we're not builders. We're not, we're not plumbers. We're not electricians. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to cook food. <laughs> we, <laughs> became, we became the contractor, putting up our own glass, putting wow. up walls, putting up everything. Was there a point when your contractor left that you guys were like, oh my God, this might be the end? Yeah. Yeah, several yeah. times, me and Carson had several conversations, and if you're willing to start your own business, I think the most important thing is they gotta think, uh, are you willing to put the time in? You know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you're not up for that, don't sign up for a business. I mean, anything can happen, right? Yeah. Even within the next year or, or months, you know? What really keeps you going? For us, what gets us up every day is that vision. It's to do something better for, for the community and other people. And people see that. So there is no such thing as like opening a restaurant because I just want to cook food. No. I think, I think I'm gonna go back to the word vision. I think when we first started, I spoke to Neil and said, hey look, I believe that we could do something greater for the community. I mean, there's a reason why we came back to Flushing. We could have done Manhattan. But we said that, you know, I don't think Manhattan or Williamsburg needs us right now. I think there's a better story to tell in Flushing. A little bit more of a serious question. Yeah. Yeah. What does failure look like? And what does making it look like? Let's talk about yeah. failure first. Four months ago, we were almost thinking about failure. Yeah. So, you know. So you guys opened three months ago. Yeah. And four months ago, you were honestly thinking about giving up. We were in a boardroom. And we were two months behind rent. No contractor. We just out by ourselves. And we had a meeting. We said, we cannot move forward unless you divert our two months of rent to 2018 so that we can hire another contractor. Or you just take our security and we we'll lose, just, everything. lose everything. We lose everything. We put a lot of our own money just to start this place and we haven't seen a penny yet. So. And we said, just take our security deposit. We're at the end, that was it. That and was the last stand. That was the right last there. stand. But luckily, the management believed in us they saw something deeper than just saying we're making money or, 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 or we're joking around. Like, no, this is it. What does success look like? Well, hopefully down the line, we will be very successful. But in the three months, we've turned over business. 
maybe tenfold of when we first started. Getting so many more customers to come every day to enjoy our food and also having the stories of them saying, wow, I feel great eating your food, losing weight, uh, being more energetic. That is a, like ultimate success for me and Carson. Last thing, is there anything you can tell young kids out there? What's the first step? Do as much research as you can, get as many numbers as you can to see if you can make it happen. That's the most important thing. Yeah, I think, I think having a plan definitely is most important. Also, um, going back to the human aspect, you gotta know who you are because there are gonna be a lot of days when it's not glamorous and you're gonna look in that mirror and you need to know who you are mm -hmm. and um, what you're made of. When you don't get a paycheck, you need to figure out what, what you're worth. And if you need to believe that you're worth more than another dollar in the bank. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Thank you Carson, man. I'm, sure. I'm so glad to see you have yeah, your own uh, spot now. Yeah. I'm wishing the best for you guys. Thank you. And yes, the, the food is pretty good. <laughs> Food's pretty good. I like it. All right, thank you guys. I appreciate it. That was okay la. To outsiders, Flushing is known for the most and best authentic Asian food. But insiders know it's changing fast. It already has a super busy intersection, and with large-scale developments backed by money from Asia flowing in, it might just become the Asian Manhattan. So it's important in this hyper-competitive New York market that you got heart, soul, and a mission you stand behind. And that was today. Two different businesses at different stages in their maturity, both serving the community they grew up in. Image has been a solid contributor to a constantly growing sneaker economy and is now looking to expand into other ventures. OK La has finally got up and running, and with some raving reviews, their Asian American fast casual spot is looking like a hit. I'm wishing the best for both of them, and I'm looking forward to seeing them make it happen. All right, everybody, that was episode two of Make It Happen out in Flushing, Queens, New York. I know there are so many more people to cover and so many more things to learn and so many more different types of businesses. I'm super excited for the rest of this series. It was so cool to cover my friends out here. All right, in the comments below, let me know what you guys might have learned after these conversations with the guys from Image and OK La because I think they said a lot and even I learned a lot too. So definitely let us know in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up. This is a cool new series that we're doing. Let us know how it's going. And uh, yo, until next time, make it happen. Peace.